Hey everyone, Shopify reported quarterly financial results that sent the stock price down as much as 20%. I'll review those numbers and explain why the stock price is down so much. Also update my recommendation for Shopify stock. Coming into this quarterly update, I did not have Shopify stock rated as a buy. I told investors not to buy this stock. I said it was too expensive. I'll update that recommendation now that it's down by 20%. I'll also cover the key financial metrics you should know from Shopify's latest quarterly update. So let's take a look at the numbers. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so I highlighted that I did not have Shopify stock rated as a buy. I had it as a hold or I thought, or in other words, I thought it was going to perform along the lines with the market. It wasn't going to outperform the market. So in the latest quarter, Shopify reported gross merchandise volume increased by 23% to 60.9 billion. That's an increase of about 11 billion year over year. That's a solid increase. Revenue increased 23% to 1.9 billion compared to the same time the prior year. Now that's a faster than industry level growth rate, suggesting that Shopify is gaining market share. In its latest quarter, Amazon, the e-commerce giant, grew revenue by much less than what Shopify grew. So Shopify is making progress in this massive industry, in this massive opportunity. Now, I'm not saying Shopify will ever grow to reach the size and scale of Amazon, but it's just a good comparison to look at when you're comparing e-commerce to e-commerce. Shopify is growing faster than most e-commerce and especially the largest e-commerce company, Amazon. Shopify also did a solid job increasing free cash flow to 232 million compared to just 86 million in the same quarter the prior year. Now its free cash flow margin for the quarter was 12% compared to just 6% in the first quarter of last year. The company has cash and marketable securities of 5.2 billion as of March 31st with a net cash position of 4.3 billion after you consider its convertible notes. So the balance sheet is absolutely excellent. Companies generating significant free cash flow well on its way to being a self-sustaining business. No worries there in terms of cash flow and the balance sheet. Moving on to the outlook for the second quarter which is one of the main reasons why the stock price was down so much. The company saying that revenue will grow at a high teens percentage rate on a year over year basis. Now high teens percentage rate means something along the lines of 17%, 18% or 19%, right? If it was mid teens, it would be 14, 15 or 16%. And if it was in the 20 percentile, the company would have said, low 20%. So that's where the company is forecasting its revenue growth for the next quarter, which will be slower than where it grew in the first quarter. So it's forecasting a decelerating growth rate, which investors do not like to see, especially when you're looking at a stock that is as expensive as Shopify. Normally, a stock that's growing at high teens percentage would be a very good sign. For instance, if a company like Verizon were to say that it's going to grow at a high teens percentage rate, the stock price would absolutely explode. It might double or triple overnight. Now I'm being a little extreme there because Verizon is growing its business at like 1% or 2%, very, very slow growth rates, right? But that's accounted for in its valuation. Verizon is trading at a very cheap valuation. Shopify is trading at a very expensive valuation. Even after this drawdown, after the earnings release, Shopify is trading at a price to free cash flow of 89, 89. That is a very expensive valuation. So when you're dealing with a company with a very high valuation, the smallest signs of decrease or deceleration or any signs of trouble sends the stock price down massively because it's almost priced for perfection. It's priced for all of its excellent prospects. And so any any signs of trouble, the stock price sells off. That's why I often suggest 
that these high valuation stocks are very risky and very volatile. Their price are, their prices move violently. And the gross profit margin for the second quarter is expected to decrease by 50 basis points compared to Q1 2024, another reason that sent the stock price down. Not only is revenue growth going to slow down, but its gross profit margin is also going to decrease. Not a bad, not a good sign. Its operating expense dollars are expected to be up in the low to mid single digit percentage rate compared to Q1. Low to mid single digit percentage is something along the lines of, let's say, 2, 3, 4, or 5% uh, growth in its operating expense, which is what they mean usually when they say low to mid single digits. Okay, the mid single digits are four, five, six percent. So low to mid single digits means you can exclude the higher end of that and then include some of the lower end. So you can say two, three, four, or five percent and exclude the six percent. And that would translate into operating expenses of between 45 or 46 percent. Meanwhile, the free cash flow margin will be similar to Q1, which is good. And they've now delivered three consecutive quarters of double digit free cash flow margin with no expectation for this trend to change. That's really good news. The company expects its free cash flow to remain elevated. That's great news for Shopify stock investors. Now, the big change recently from Shopify was the divestiture of its logistics business. Remember, it spent billions of dollars acquiring Deliverer and investing in its own logistics business to try and give merchants more options. I thought that was a mistake and I highlighted that in my articles and videos a couple of years ago and it turns out it was a mistake and it's costing the company a lot of money and it's changing the way it's accounting uh, income statement and balance sheet. It's changing things, making it more complicated. You'll notice here that its total operating expenses year over year fell from 910 million to 871 million. And so its income from operations looks better at 86 million compared to negative 193 million. That's because it now accounts for that company in a different way. While it sold the company, while it divested away from the company, it didn't sell it for all cash. It sold it for some cash and some stock. So it still owns a great deal of that company, the deliverer that it sold off and the divestiture of the logistic business. It's still exposed to that industry, to that business. And you see that here with other income and expense. Last year, that was 269 million. This year, it's negative 342 million. And this will fluctuate all the time because it owns a stake in that company. As the valuation of that company increases or decreases, Shopify has to account for that in this line item here, whereas previously it would account for those expenses under its normal operating expense line item. It now moves down here. So it's a shift in how it accounts for this thing. And then now you see it on its balance sheet. It has equity and other investments of $2.6 billion and $2.977 billion carried at fair value. And then it also has an equity method investment of $735 million. So it has roughly $4 billion of investment in these other companies and these outside businesses. And as their valuation changes, Shopify needs to account for that on its financial statements. So it moves off of Shopify's income and expense line item, goes into the balance sheet, and as the valuation changes, Shopify needs to account for it in that line item on the income statement. So it's not totally divested away from that business. It's sold for some cash and some equity investment, and you see the equity investment here. So like I highlighted, the stock is trading at a, a price to free cash flow of 89, which is very expensive, and it's still too expensive. So to update my recommendation for Shopify stock, I'm keeping it rated as a hold market perform. I'm not recommending investors buy this stock today. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.